Hey guys, what's up? This is Pantar Dragon, and today we're going to be doing another video on the patch notes, like I said in my last video, and I hope you guys do enjoy these patch notes videos. This is going to be the part 2 of patch 6.22, and I'm still sick, but I'm feeling a little better. Anyways, on the last patch video, we talked about the assassin updates and the mastery changes, and today we're going to be going over some balance changes plus the new items. So yeah, with all that being said, let's get started. Alright, so first off, let's talk about the smite. So now restores 100 health plus 10% of your maximum health when used on monsters. And then a bunch of times are being delayed. And the biggest change, additional buffs for using smite on camps are removed. So, no more ground buff, no more raptor buff, no more wolf spirit, you get the idea. So you're gonna have to use your smite on the hard monsters, or I guess whenever you need to heal. I don't really care too much about the buffs on the monsters. Like, as the game goes on, the only ones that were useful was the raptor camp, and I guess the wolf camp. Yeah, I don't know, it was a little weird, but I won't really miss it too much. Although it is kind of like going backwards in League of Legends and kind of downgrading. So it's a bit weird to see that, but eh, whatever. Jungle we played a little bit differently. And also in the jungle, there's these things called the plants. Okay, so my final opinion, I guess, on them is they're really stupid. So the one that knocks you away, that one's like, I don't know, that one's for shits and giggles. That one's just stupid, and I, and I think it's funny. The scrying one just gets you vision of where the enemy jungler is, so it's like a telescope. And then the overpowered one is a honey fruit, which heals for like 50% of your health. That one's like super OP and should not be in the game. The other two, okay, that's fine, but uh, I don't know, I don't like these plants. Tried them in normal games, I don't know, they're kind of fun, but in a ranked game, I don't think I would find them fun. They would honestly hurt my brain too much, and I'd just be overwhelmed with stuff that I have to contest. So hopefully they do remove them, or they implement some other cool thing. Alright, so there's so much things happening for the jungle. Um, blah blah blah, camps respawn increased to 150 seconds. Jungle levels now scale with average champion levels. Blue no longer has smaller monsters, now has negative MR. Gromp apparently shits on you and spawns 15 seconds later. This is also the same with Krugs, so Botling can't do them. And Elder Dragon buff increased by 30 seconds. Now my opinion on all of this, uh, okay, I'll give the opinion after this. Alright, so part 2, the Krugs now split into smaller Krugs, and actually are worth a little bit more. Just because they take so long to do, and now there's 5 small Raptors, so it's actually super annoying to do if you don't have AoE. Red also has negative armor, so that's actually pretty interesting. If you have magic damage, you start blue side. If you have physical damage, you start red side. Rift Herald's spawn time has been increased to 10 minutes, but that's kinda dumb because it only lasts for 10 minutes now. <laughs> but at least the attack damage is lowered now. Um, overall, I do think the jungle is going to be more oriented for, you know, people who have AoE damage. Just because of Raptor Camp and Krug Camp, but also since respawn timers are higher, maybe ganking will be more efficient. But if I overlook the Raptor and Krug changes, it kind of feels the same. Now, when I played in this new jungle, I felt like I got more gold, but I'm not 100% sure if that is true or not. Next up is a rework that's called Alistair, that apparently had no notice or like, notifications that he would get reworked. But as you can see, there's a bunch of shit going on. Basically, think his E and passive have been uh, swapped around, and Q doesn't stun anymore. Now his E actually does, but you need to trample someone for like 2.5 seconds, and then it stuns someone plus an enhanced auto attack. I actually played around with this on the PvE server, and holy shit, his level 1 damage with his E was super OP. I was like, what? the hell is that so you know i could definitely see him being played in a top lane but his healing from his passive now heals more to his ally than him bruiser alistair could work but the thing is his ease damage per level is really bad and his ultimate no longer gives ad his heal also scales with level now instead of like putting levels into it but he's definitely a really interesting champion i think he's gonna trade way better in the bot lane now and he actually has more power when he all ends so i'm not sure but you might see ignite thunder lords alistair in the bot lane and now he turns into a kill lane i think this actually might be a buff but I don't I'm not really 100% sure next up Ivern is actually getting a nerf and this champion just sucks ass well his Q cooldown is going to 9 which is still mm, kind of long but it is pretty good and now his R is getting more health while also having AI fixes which is you know really good because this AI is like really stupid like just look at this clip she goes like so stupid and doesn't do anything until I press right click so hopefully that makes her easier to play or easier to play Ivern but yeah I mean I don't know his cooldowns are really long his W is like honestly I think it's completely useless it needs more range or something like you know something from Warcraft 3 those tree and protectors that's what I'm imagining you know but this champion he needs more or I don't know he, he sucks next up is gonna be Kled look look the remount delay decreased to 0.5 seconds from 
on 1.25, thank god. You know, sometimes I would get on my mount and then I die and I'm like, I was on my mount, what the fuck? But they lowered his W and I'm like, okay, that doesn't make sense, but whatever. I don't think he actually deserves a nerf at all. You know, I thought he was kind of balanced, but okay. I guess he can take a hit, but I don't think anyone's gonna play him. And now Hunter's Machete gets a buff. 2% more lifesteal, and I think it actually increased by 10 more damage. That's actually a lot. I guess, you know, I did say Talisman was an OP item compared to the Machete, so I guess this is good. Next up you have these control wards which are actually pink wards but don't reveal stealth champions only camouflaged. So that's Evelyn, Rengar, Twitch and that's it. Thank god I hated revealing people with pink wards so now I don't get blamed for it if I'm playing support. Next up let's talk about the Edge of Night. So this item is pretty cool. It's like an active Banshee's Veil and I think it might be the new item for assassins who build Ma Ma Mortius but I think it's pretty good. But the visual effects on it are definitely not too noticeable so it's actually hard to recognize if someone has it on or not. Overall, seems like a great item. The next item we're going to be talking about is this Knight's Vow. Jesus, this item is so... looks so good. Holy shit, for 2,400 gold a minute, you can get 60 armor, 400 health, and you have the Bond of Stone passive, so you can reduce 12 damage from your AD carry and protect the shit out of him with his OP item. I mean, Jesus Christ, this is so OP. Oh yeah, and you get 15% movement speed. But this just seems ridiculous. I honestly think tanky supports are going to be so good with this. And also Bond of Stone is still in the game, so yeah. You know, you're going to have comps where you like protect the mid laner and AD carry now. It's just going to be so much awesome. Hell yeah! I actually might buy this on some junglers like Nunu. Next up, we have the Poacher's Dirk, which basically, if you kill three enemy jungle camps, you get a Serrated Dirk. But I don't know, this is like a risky item. I would just rather buy a Serrated Dirk than this item. It's only like 350 gold more. It's very similar to Cole though, but there's a minute quote on it, so I probably won't get it ever. The next item we're going to be talking about is Redemption, which is basically an active item that creates a big sunbeam that heals your allies and does two damage to enemies. Think like a huge delayed Leona ultimate that has a huge range. Now the healing on it is pretty decent, actually it's almost like a wish, like a level 11 wish if you hit all of your teammates. And it does 10% maximum health true damage to all enemies. The delay is 2.5 seconds but trust me, this sunbeam is bigger than Leona's ultimate. And I think it will actually provide a lot of zoning. And honestly, this item looks really fun, definitely look out for it. <clears throat> now all three lethality items, did I say it right? I think I did, have all been kind of changed. They get movement speed out of combat, mod doesn't give any lethality anymore, and now gives cooldown reduction. Thus blade has been changed to uh, your next auto attack doing true damage based on how much lethality. See how see how weird that sounds? It just doesn't sound right. So let's go back to lethality. And it actually is super good for people like Talon, Zed, okay, basically every AD assassin. But now Ghostblade, I don't know if I actually want to get this item. Um, it doesn't give attack speed anymore. So I'm actually going to shy away from this, especially on someone like Twitch. So yeah, Edge of Night, Dustblade, those are probably going to be my two assassin items. Abyssal Scepter's Aura now makes enemies take 10% more magic damage instead of reducing their magic resist. I think this is definitely a nerf because you can do a lot more damage when you reduce the enemy's magic resist by like 20. Especially when they have like 30 magic resist, they're taking basically true damage. So yeah, the Abyssal Scepter got nerfed. And now they finally got rid of the Aegis of Legion's Aura that gives magic resist and all of its upgrades. So you probably, mm, you'll probably see Locket though, but it's going to be more rare. Because the Knight's Vow looks so much better. Next up, Ardent Sensor actually gets a change. Instead of doing magic damage, you now drain 20 health on hit. It doesn't say if it's magic or physical damage, but I assume it's magical damage. Or uh, maybe it's true damage. But hey, 20 health per auto attack that, you know, in a team fight, that could be like 200 health if you auto attack 10 times. Which is actually really good. So you'll definitely see this item a lot more often. The Banner of Command now gives armor now. No more AP. So it's like a shittier version of ZZ Rod Portal. Mikhail's Crucible has gotten a huge buff as active cooldown has been lowered to 120 seconds. Healing and shield power has been increased by 5%. Cost has been lowered, what? And now gives slow immunity for 2 seconds and also grants 40% movement speed. So this is going to buff people like Janna, Soraka, uh, Nami, you know, all these healing champions. And this item looks legit kind of broken. Also the mana regen and health regen part is a little changed. But yeah, this item looks so OP. And this next item called... Oh. 
Face of the Mountain now grants you and your ally a shield, so they're definitely buffing all these support items, which is pretty cool. And now the locket has different stats. It honestly looks really weird, but I think people will still buy it for the shield, but only tanks will do that, not like Janna or, you know, the girl supports who heal. And the damage on Protobelt has been nerfed. As you can see, the AP ratio has been lowered by 10%, and damage dealt with additional bolts has been lowered by 10%. It was definitely a really bursty item, but I don't really think it actually deserves too big of a- Okay, it's not really that big of a nerf, but still, I don't think they should nerf this. I think they should nerf something like Rylai's Crystal Scepter. That thing is OP. And yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did skip a few things. They were like very small things, but I think I covered most of them. So hopefully you guys did enjoy these two videos I put out for patch 6.22. And if you guys did like this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you didn't, make sure to subscribe. Anyways, I am Pantsire Dragon, and I'll see you guys next time.